Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Amber. Um, and today I am continuing my four part series on living with a chronic illness. I want to be, I wanted to talk about the importance of self advocacy and um, being able to advocate for yourself. If you see steam behind me, it's because I'm running a vaporizer because I have a very bad cold. And if I lose my voice, I apologize. But back to what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about the importance of self-advocacy. I could talk about this topic for days, but I won't, I won't, I won't be around for that long to talk about it today. Um, I just think it's so important because if we can't stand up and advocate for ourselves, most, chance, most likely no one else is going to do that for us and we won't get the care that we really need and what we want. So I wanted to talk about what really is self-advocacy. The definition of self-advocacy is simply representing oneself, one's values, one's views, or one's interest. Basically, over the last six years, I've learned that I can't expect anyone else to stand up for me if I don't know how I feel, what I believe, or even what I want if I don't know what I want and how I feel. So I have to learn, I've had to learn to be my best advocate in that situation and that I can't rely on even my family at times, even though my mother is my best advocate. And I'm not just saying that because she may be watching, um, but she is. And as for today, I'm going to be talking mostly about advocacy in the medical setting, but we really do have to know what's best for us so we can advocate for ourselves and so that we can talk with our doctors and our other providers about what we want and then how we think and feel about what treatment options they may bring up to us. Um, how can you be a self-advocate? Well, the best thing you can do in any situation, but especially in the medical setting, is to research. Research, research, research. I'm kind of a research nerd in that fact because I spend hours, anytime somebody brings up a possible diagnosis or a possible new treatment, I spend hours on research. And I could do a whole new series just on research because you have to be careful. I'll go off on a tangent for a second, but you have to be careful not to just use Dr. Google and take it for, for everything. You have to make sure that you're using reputable, respectable websites like the um, CDC or the National Health Institute or things like that and not Wikipedia who anyone can um, update. Um, hi, this is great. Um, the best resources that I have found are honestly people who had the condition that I have or maybe have maybe diagnosed with who've had it longer because they've been through a lot of the same treatments courses or procedures or things like that um, and can kind of give you an idea of what to expect those are kind of also things you have to take with a grain of salt because they're going to throw in a little bit of their own two cents but usually people who've been there before can lead you a good way as far as giving you lots of information on side effects on medications, what to expect with a procedure. Um, if you live in the same area and, ha and know people that have um, had lupus, for instance, that's one of my main diag uh, I can't talk diagnoses. Um, you know, I could talk to people who've had those kind of doctors and they could give me an idea of who would be the best doctor in my area to see. So patients and caregivers are great resources. Yes, patients and caregivers are great resources. Some of the best you will find, honestly, but they can also be kind of some, sometimes they can be the worst because the, as the saying goes, you're going to hear more about the worst experiences than you're ever going to hear about the best experiences. So like I said, you just have to take it from the grain of salt. I do, I've joined many online communities 
And actually, um, about six months on a tangent, about six months after I was diagnosed, I actually started um, a online community myself. It was originally geared more towards lupus, but over the last five years, um, it has opened up to people with autoimmune disorders in general. And um, we take just about anybody with who is a caregiver, who has had an autoimmune disorder, who may have an autoimmune disorder, who has a chronic illness. Um, and if you want information on my, on my um, group, you can uh, send me a Twitter, send me a tweet on Twitter. Um, I'm Loopier Warrior, Loopy Warrior 511. You can find all my links below. Um, and I'll be glad to give you the information. But you can also get a lot of good information from those groups or forums. But again, you can also get some really bad information too, just because you can get any wise guy in there. So you just have to be really careful when you are doing your research to make sure that you're getting good information. Um, but after you've been doing it a little while, you can kind of tell who are the better people to get um, feedback from and who are the people you kind of want to avoid but that comes with time. But most people who've had the condition for a while are gonna be a great resource. Um, I'm gonna turn the page in my notes, hold on just a second. Um, as far as being a self-advocate, like I said, you wanna research, 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 but you also want to make sure that your provider, your doctor, your nurse practitioner, whoever it is you see, you want to make it known to them without being rude that you are up to date on your research on whatever it may be and that you want to be included in all treatment plans. You know, you don't want them to just come to a meeting and say, this is what we're going to do and move on. You want to be part of that. You want to be part of the discussion. You just don't want treatment options thrown at you. You actually want to be part of the discussion. Um, and then I'm trying to cut some of these thoughts out so I don't bore you guys. But um, by being a good patient self-advocate for yourself or even for a family member, you're showing the doctors that you're not going to stand to be pushed around and that you appreciate their care, but on your own terms. Meaning, like I said, you want to be included in any treatment plans. And as far as um, teaching your family. That was my last point I wanted to make was as far as teaching your family how to advocate. Um, the best way you can do is just to provide them with the education that you find, have found useful. Sit down with them, talk to them, tell them about your what you're going through, your symptoms, the medications that you take, and, and then provide them with education on the conditions. Um, my mom has had to become one of my best advocates because I have hemiplegic migraines. And there are times when I literally can't form a sentence. And so there have been many, many times where she's had to take me to um, the emergency room to receive care because I can't form a sentence. And so she was kind of thrown in to the wolf, so to speak, and kind of had to learn to be my advocate. But she'd been along with me throughout the whole ride. She knew what was happening, but I think that's kind of when we realized that she really needed to learn a lot about what was going on with my other conditions. Because when you live with a chronic illness, chances are you don't just have a singular chronic illness. Chances are you may have three, four, five, and that they're all interwoven. And so, you know, what one treatment that works for migraine on many won't work on me because I have this heart condition. And then, so everything comes into play. So as far, your family can be your best advocate, as long as you provide them with the education that they need to do so. Basically, if I had to narrow it down, the word I would choose to explain advocacy is knowledge. I know it's cheesy, but in the case of chronic illness, knowledge really is power. The more you know about your condition, your medication, and the more that your family, your spouse, whoever is going to help you be a better advocate, the more they know, the better care you can get in the long run. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, um, you know, find me on my social media. 
let me know if you have any questions. I'm always willing to talk to anybody. Um, just let me know. I will be back on Thursday for another part of the series. And I haven't yet decided exactly what that one's going to be about. But I will be back at 1030 on Thursday. I will see you guys then. I hope you'd enjoyed.